Hi, this is May. And I'm Joy. Welcome to the QWERTY Writing Life Podcast, where we have candid chats about our creative lives. May and I are friends, writers, and creatives who want to share our endeavors out loud. On this podcast, we're here to encourage each other, and you too, and share tools we've discovered or made up, so you can follow your passions with a little support. So grab your tea, or your coffee, and let's get started. Hello, everyone. It's another week. Hello and welcome. Tonight, we are going to have season two, a QWERTY review as our topic. But before we do that, let's talk about our creative weeks. Joy, what did you do? So I am proud to announce that I have finished every good thing. (laughs) So we have a complete first draft. Don't get too excited, everybody. It's a first draft, but... Yes, it is officially one whole complete thing. I beg to differ. Everybody get excited. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just so glad that it's finally done. Look, you can't edit something that you haven't written, and now now you have written it. Exactly. And all of the good, juicy details and everything will be in with the edits, and I'm so excited. Yes, I agree. And, you know, I do love edits and revisions and stuff like that. Revisions are like the layers that you get to put in there, like you said. And oh, I love that part. So I'm just glad. <laughs> I'm just glad that it's all in one piece. So now it's in the very capable hands of my critique partners. <laughs> so what about you, May? It's true. I um I did edits on the formatting for my poetry book. So I'm giving those back now to the formatter. And so she'll be making those changes. It was hard in that I had never done it before, mm. but I'm I'm really good at like making a decision and sticking to it. So if I if I made a decision at the beginning of the book and then I get to something in the middle or close to the end, I can remember that decision. Or if I can't remember that decision, I'll remember where it was in the book. So I'll scroll back up and like, okay, this is how I decided to do that, you know, so I can be consistent in there. And I found that as I got into the book and got further into it, the better I got, the faster I got at making decisions. So I really do think that that is like a muscle. Like if you exercise your decision, decision making muscle, you get faster at it and you can kind of process those things a little bit faster too. That makes perfect sense. I don't know. It's a theory. It's a working theory. Yeah. (laughs) <clears throat> well, and I love like each each little stage of of this is so much fun. So I'm so excited that you're at that stage. I know. And if there are audience members out there who are a little frustrated that I haven't put a specific date on it, it's because I don't know how long these things take yet. This is my first time to indie publish. And so I am just kind of taking it one step at a time. And of course, I would pick the hardest type of book to do. <laughs> And then add hand-drawn illustrations to it at the last minute. Like, who does that? Who does that? Um, (laughs) So I have a book that has to be formatted as poetry. You know, the way that it looks on the page is also a part of the book. Uh, and and the, your experience, the reader experience of it. And then I was like, I'm going to add 26 illustrations, hand-drawn illustrations. That was nuts. I don't know, like... Once I had made the decision, I had to stick with it. And about halfway through, I was like, I don't know if this was a good one this time, but I'm glad I did it. Like now that it's done, I'm glad I did it. There's not one of them that I'm not proud of. And so I know like that's art and I want to share it with the world. And so it's in the book, but that's what I've been doing this week. Awesome. All right. Joy has been so kind to take the last four weeks of, of the episodes and just spearhead those. She found other people for you to listen to and join her. She um, brought other mom authors in. She talked to her husband. She did some beautiful work with Legacy and bringing in some of her kids' poetry and stuff like that. And it was just the, the four episodes that Joy did on her own were just really 
wonderful. And the time that I was able to use to grieve and also to work on the poetry book um, was so needed. And I'm just so thankful. And I um, just wanted to say that out loud. Well, but also, it was not I'm the same without you. <laughs> but you did so well. Like you could do this. Like you could do this without me. I don't want you to please never do it without me, but it's not as much fun, (laughs) but you did so well. And the episodes are so good and jam packed with good information. So thank you for that and giving me that, um, that space because I didn't know I needed it, but joy knew that I needed it. This happens a lot in my life where joy knows (laughs) that I need something. And she's like, so I'm doing this for you. Just letting you know. (laughs) Well, and I am proud of you because you have gotten this poetry book out and that is amazing and incredible. So all of the illustrations that you've done, everything that you've, all this work that you've done in the past few weeks is just incredible to me. So totally astounded over here. It's amazing how perseverant you can be when you really want to. Mm -hmm. So even with all the craziness that has been going on Mm -hmm. um, in life. um, But, and I also knew that I didn't need to take that time for granted that you gave me that I needed to to use it towards something that was important. And I, I know that, um, that you would not have shunned me or <laughs> judged me if I would have just curled up in a ball and just cried the whole time. Not um, at all. But, but I didn't want to be, I didn't want to waste that time and that gift that you gave me. So Aww. I worked hard. <laughs> so. You did. okay so that was fun so I guess let's just kind of dive in we're gonna look back at this season two can you believe that this is our the end of our second season I know I'm so (laughs) it always shocks me every time this is last season it shocked me this season's it shocked me uh and then when I was looking back through our we have a google drive and we keep an outline of every episode that we do and I was as I was looking back through all of the season two episodes I was like oh this one's a good one I really liked this one and I'd write it down and then I'd get you know a little bit further and I'm like oh this one was really good too and I'd like write <laughs> that one down <laughs> it's like I don't know why I'm surprised that we can keep coming up with really good topics about creativity and like like analyzing our own creativity but I am is that weird <laughs> how do you feel about that yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. It's I think it's because we are both so passionate about the topic and it's just so much fun. And yeah, it is surprising though. It's like, wow, we keep thinking of all these new and different things that we can talk about and um or ways to talk about them even. Even if it's yeah, not a I completely think, new thing, you know. Yes, absolutely. If we can add to a conversation, I think that that's really good too. But I also think that it is proof that we are ever growing as well Mm -hmm. so because all of these new topics keep coming up and it's like oh we we, we, we've been through this just like this week or last month or something or we've been thinking about this particular thing and it's because we've been practicing creativity and we have been evolving ourselves as creatives and I just think it's really neat (laughs) yes yes I would definitely agree so we thought what we, what we would do first is check out the top 10 most downloaded episodes of season two. So this is from you guys. These are the ones that you downloaded the most that you seem to enjoy the most. And we're going to kind of look at these um, from the bottom up. So number 10 was learning from creative ideals. This was episode nine and we shared some of our creative ideals. Those were people in our chosen creative mediums whose work we admire, and we shared a four-step process that we use to learn the most from them. So that was a really fun episode, and I really enjoyed that. So three of our Creative Critique Partner episodes made it to the top 10. So that was a series that we named our Creative Critique Partner episodes, and that was episode 21, 22, and 23. 
And that was a lot of fun, too, because that was based off of our book that Joy and I wrote together called Finders Keepers, A Practical Approach to Find and Keep Your Writing Critique Partner. And we took those principles that we wrote about in that book and then applied it to creatives in general. So that's why it's titled The Creative Critique Partner. And it's an entire series on on how to find how to keep and what you're looking for in creative critique partners and three of those episodes made it to the top 10 so yeah you guys seem to like it too (laughs) that's awesome yay yeah so evaluating yourself uh was number nine and that was where we discussed the importance of knowing yourself your strengths and your weaknesses and your goals as a creative then number seven was the defining critique partnerships and that's where we just explained what the whole thing was anyway. And number four was choosing a critique partner where we gave some practical tips on how you can choose the right critique partner for you. Number eight was our interview with a creative Chloe Rouse on finding the story in creative projects. This was episode 36. This was a blast. And Chloe is actually a videographer and a photographer. So we got to get another kind of creative medium in there. And she had some really interesting things to share about creativity. And actually kind of kind of uh, put me on the spot too with like getting off of the burner. Got to get it off the burner. To, don't let it burn, she said. And number six was another interview with a creative. And this was with Alexa Bigwarf, our dear friend. And this was on creating when bad things happen. That was episode 20, and that was a fantastic episode as well. Just very thought-provoking, and of course, Alexa is amazing. So another good one. Yeah, and um, Alexa actually has a course on writing through grief as well. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely go check that Mm -hmm. episode 20 show notes because I believe that it is inside of there, that link. And we'll put it Um, in the show notes notes as well. Oh, we're going to put it in these show notes as well. (laughs) Um, So number five, I believe we're at. Mm -hmm. Um, That one was taking a creative page from our kids. It was episode eight. And Joy and I discussed ways that we encouraged our our creative discovery in our kids' lives and also um, applied some practical tips to boost our adult creativity as well. So that was a lot of fun. It was. It was. And then number three was kickstarting personal creativity. That was actually episode one for this season. And we tackled the question, when you're in a season of life where you're feeling lackluster about creativity, what can you do to get yourself back in the game? And then we continued that series with, um, after you have inspired yourself, how can you inspire somebody else? And that was a, that was a good episode as well. Yeah. And I think we even had a third one in that series too, where how can you kickstart um, creative collaborations, if mm-hmm. I recall correctly? Yeah. Um, which was really cool. Yeah. So. I enjoy our series. I like it whenever we get to build upon an idea and go deeper into it. I don't know about you, but yeah, I I completely agree. Mm. So number two is getting the most from creative instruction. So this tied with the creative critique partner as my favorite series for this season. And you guys liked it too, because it was number two. And this is where we talked about um, how we can prepare ourselves or like mentally, time-wise, physically, note-wise for going into a workshop or a seminar or conference or something like that. And this was so cool because we did this episode. This is part one. This was another series. And then we actually put the series into action and and this information into action. And we worked on Maggie Steve Otter's writing course, (laughs) which she turned into a digital course because of everything that was going on with COVID. And I'm so thankful that she did that. I'm so glad that there was a a silver lining with all of the pandemic things that were not great. There was a silver lining. And a lot of that was that all of this instruction and all of these good things became available to people who would not have been able to go to those places and do that, those things. And this was one of those, those happenstances where Joy and I were just like, we will never get this opportunity again. (laughs) 
So we both bought the, the workshop and it honestly changed the way that I thought about story and writing. And uh, it was a big, big deal. So we not only got to articulate the thoughts on how to put all of this into words as far as how we learn and, and what we can do to prep for this, but we actually put it into action. And that was awesome. So great. Thank you, Maggie. Yay. <laughs> it really was the best. Definitely. If you are a writer and you would like to take a course, but maybe you don't have a lot of funds or you're just kind of, you just want one, just one instead of all the millions that are out there. This is your one. <laughs> It has been vetted and approved. Yes. Times two. <laughs> yes. And occasionally she'll have, like, it's totally worth the hundred dollars that it is. But just Very like, a, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was on sale for $25. That so is if you watch crazy. for this sale, yeah, it's, it's, well, you're stealing it for $25, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. All right. And that brings us to our number one most downloaded episode of season two. And that was Prep for Success, part one, episode 15. This is where we share a fun acronym to help you prep for success. And if you missed that episode or you forgot what PREP stands for, be sure to check it out. And we're going to link to all the episodes we're mentioning down in the show notes. So don't worry. It'll all be down there. You can just click on it and watch whichever one pops out at you. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be great. <laughs> so that's what the, those are the episodes that you guys liked a ton. So Joy, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. And can you tell us how many downloads Query Writing Life has had? Well, so far for our two seasons, we have had more than 8,500 downloads. So thank you guys for listening and tuning in. That makes us feel so great. Ditto. That's amazing. Thank you so very much. And uh, do you do you download all of your episodes when you listen to podcasts? No, I don't. I stream mine. Yeah. So I, know. I don't know if that counts towards somebody else's numbers if I stream it and listen to it, but I normally stream mine. I don't normally download them. Yeah. So... I don't know, question mark there at analytics, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right, so why yes. don't you tell us what uh, what were some of your top episodes, just the ones that you enjoyed the mm -hmm. most? Okay, yeah. Well, I just told you that the creative instruction and the creative CP were my favorite series episodes, mm -hmm. and, and I think I talked about why there too, mm -hmm. but um, I do have some more as well. Um, so some of the most fun to record with you were the just because episode where we talked oh, about yeah. Firefly a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That was the best where we actually, I mean, it was research. We had to watch Firefly again. I had to watch the whole season and I took notes <laughs> and even from like, from the corny title song all the way to the end. It's so good and, and refreshing and like nostalgic to go back and watch all of those and talk about story and character arcs and all of these things. It's so good. I loved it. I loved it. Um, and another fun one that I thought was like, wow, this is just fun to think about was the, um, if we owned a bookshop, the mm. one that we did the week of, um, the independent bookstore oh, yeah. celebration. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a, a, an episode there. If we owned a bookshop and some of our suggestions are not realistic, but they're still so much fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had a blast with that one. And then there are a couple that like re-inspired me as I was looking through this list and so I'm going to throw them out there and see if maybe it re-inspires you. Hey, Tolkien, I see you, darling. Oh, that's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's been back there the whole time. I don't know if y'all have been able to see him or not, but every now and then he gets well, up and shifts. <laughs> for like a millisecond, I thought your hair was moving on its own volition, <laughs> and I was getting a little scared, but then I realized it was the kitty cat. So Yeah, right yeah, now our sorry. hair is the same color. So, but as far as like the, the episodes that have like re-inspired me, is that a word? It is today. Re-inspired me. Those are going to be episode 18 
the creative trinity i'm gonna oh, yeah, get like back on my one. creative trinity pre- mm. um train i know i felt so much better when i had that as a as a focus yeah um and then also episode 27 is gratitude amplifies creativity mm-hmm. and i was like yeah yeah i need a little bit more of that too so those are some examples of my favorite episodes dare i say that they're all excellent (laughs) it's a bit of hubris (laughs) well it's just so much fun to do this together and i do think that it's a lot of fun to hear our back and forth and like how we have different takes on things but also often we have some of the same takes we just have maybe a different way of putting it and um, i think that that's a really neat thing about being able to do this together so absolutely yeah and it's interesting too to see like sometimes we have the the same end goal Mm -hmm. but we get to them in different ways yeah and I I kind of look at it a lot like my my two kids like they both like cheese but (laughs) one of them likes melted cheese and one of them likes not melted cheese oh yeah yeah. (laughs) and don't you dare melt that baby's cheese because that's just not good (laughs) I have one of those too so (laughs) It's just interesting, like how we can we can like the same things, we can do the same things, we can have this have the same goals, but just mm-hmm. getting to them and the way that they end up is different because we're we're different people, we're individuals, and yet we can do this together and really mesh well. It's, yeah. it's kind of a, it's kind of magic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. So, so what are your favorite episode or episodes? Yeah. So I I kind of. Honestly, it's kind of hard because you guys have some of the our favorites are the top 10. Okay, so my favorite was Facing Creative Insecurity, and that was episode 37. And I felt like this was an important topic because every single creative is going to face this from time to time. And we are never going to get to a point where we won't face it again. It's just one of those things that's part of a creative's life. So I felt like it was a very important topic and one that um, I think we all need to kind of just think about and consider every now and then and just remember that we're not alone. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, too, that, like, we can be professionals and we can still be learners. And so every time we hit a place where we're feeling secure about the thing that we were insecure about before, then we are learning something new. And so we're back into that insecurity place. So it's like this ladder and the higher that you get, the more that you know, but also it brings on other insecurities. And so insecurity is actually kind of a good thing because that shows you that you're learning. That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we said that, but if we didn't, then you heard it here, folks. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have to do another one. <laughs> so our next part that we are going to talk about in this episode is a look back since June 2020. And we did start this whole QWERTY Writing Life podcast in June. I don't know why we decided to do that, but we did. So our <laughs> seasons start in June. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So we're going to take a look back since June 2020 to pull what we feel are highlights for us individually and for the QWERTY writing life. So, Joy, would you like to go first? Well, sure. Um, So individually, I faced the first strong urge and serious consideration to throw in the towel. And I'm still here. (laughs) So, (laughs) woohoo. I'm I'm learning to... (laughs) So what's a highlight, Joy? I wanted to throw in the towel. Look, I'm still here. That's the highlight. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so I am well, learning, I though. That's good. <laughs> I'm learning, though, um, to frequently assess what's working and what's not when it comes to where I'm investing my time and energy. And I've learned that saying no to certain things is not only okay, but it's needed. So I think individually that was kind of like my super highlight um, for this season, for this year. <clears throat> and then from a QWERTY standpoint, I, honestly, I am proud of how we survived this past year. We could have said peace <laughs> out multiple times, but we, we found ways to keep going and found ways to add value for our audience and exemplify what we've spoken about so many times. And that is digging deep, being introspective, and continuing our mission and working toward our goals. So I'm pretty proud of us for that. Yeah, kudos you. Yay. Kudos you. (laughs) That's for us. (laughs) 
yeah. Um, I, I am, I think that that's kind of my highlight too, as far as just being perseverant, both Mm -hmm. individually and with QWERTY writing life, like the whole, the whole first part of the COVID pandemic, we never missed an episode. We didn't, like, and we didn't really miss an episode. Now we made a conscious choice to replay two episodes uh, when I had some emergency, family emergency things. But other than those two episodes that we replayed, so we still had it. And then Joy added like a new intro to it as well. So there was actually some new parts to it. Um, other than that, we had new content for you guys every single week. And I just feel really proud about that, that we didn't push our creative passions to the back burner in total, totally, you know, there were some things that fell that fell through the cracks, but this was not one of them. And keeping up with the podcast has actually helped us keep our creative passions in the forefront. So it helped us as well. I yeah. think it helped me, Yeah, um, for sure. but as far as highlights go for Corey, particularly, um, I was super, super, Super excited to be invited back as a group, you and I, as mm-hmm. Courting Writing Life, to uh, the WIP Summit, so the Women in Publishing Summit. That was super nice. And then we got to step it up a notch, too, and Joy got to present an individual workshop, and I got to present an individual theory, yeah. and uh, and that was just huge. Like It was just like we're growing, and, and it was tangible proof that what we say and our experience and what we do matters mm-hmm. and it's kind of nice to be validated at some point in time yeah, yeah. so um, I also had COVID during that yeah. <laughs> which was another sign of perseverance right yeah. <laughs> so. bless your heart I don't know how on earth you did that but you were amazing you showed up and you gave such great answers and you were so engaged and I was like oh my gosh you just need to go to bed <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny your comments were like you look like you're about to fall over are you okay <laughs> we we finished a podcast episode and she was like you bed now yeah. <laughs> but yeah yeah so that happened not only did that happen but joy and I also outlined our next co-authored book together this year <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah, but but wait, there's more. Uh, (laughs) I feel like an infomercial. (laughs) But not only do we um, outline a book for our next co-authored book, but we also individually outlined a book for the author resource series that is a QWERTY writing life book. Mm. But we all we we're gonna do a singularly authored book in in that series as well and we both outlined that too so we've got three outlined author resource series books for you guys coming up in the in the future and that's a big deal logos and mythos press has a lot of work to do (laughs) (laughs) so and then highlight a highlight on the um individual like personal level honestly there wasn't a ton of highlights this uh, since June. <laughs> but, that is so not true, then, Missy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there there were highlights. In fact, I'll talk about two of them. Hmm. So these 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 were highlights. Uh, Story Swell got off the ground. And hmm. so I've got newsletters coming out once a month now. And I've got some ideas for blog posts. I did one of my favorite ones. And I don't know if anybody's seen this or not because, you know, <laughs> But I um, I broke down the song lyrics to Bruce Springsteen's Thunder Road. And I also have like an introductory little bit of story of how I was introduced to the song too. And just like the nostalgia of revisiting and then like diving deep into what the song means to me and why I respect it was a lot of fun. And then, of course, you guys have been hearing for the last few weeks that I am working on publishing my poetry book, and it's done. It's just, you know, the edits for the formatting. And so now it's all just technical stuff. So I have a beautiful cover. I have illustrations and formatting and page numbers, and I know how long my book is. (laughs) So exciting. Isn't that interesting? (laughs) How you can 
like just being able to to say I know that this book is 99 pages or something like that yeah. is is just thrilling it's just so very thrilling so That's exciting I know yeah. I cannot wait so there are the bit yeah me neither so there are some creative things that are happening that are definite highlights there were there were a lot of personal things that were just like good gracious can this year get any worse <laughs> And then you knock on wood and pray that that's not the case. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I am just thankful for all that we have been able to do this year and all that we've been able to share with you guys. And so that just kind of leads us to just a little bit of an announcement that, and if you get our, our newsletter, which the link is in the show notes. So if you get our newsletter, you already know this, there will be a season three. Um, but it's going to have yeah. some tweaks and we cannot wait to reveal all of those details in our next episode. So be on the lookout for that. And we would love some suggestions from you guys. Um, so just consider this your open invitation to use our email address as your suggestion box. Editorial at logosandmythospress.com. And we cannot wait to hear from you. So are we ready for our challenge? That's exactly what I was going to say. You got out of my head, Joy. Sorry. <laughs> See, we're still like this. <laughs> so, yes, I think it is definitely time for a QWERTY challenge. So, were any of these episodes mentioned today your favorite as well? Was it any of the downloaded ones of the lists, you know, that we gave at the top? Or maybe one of the ones that we talked about individually that maybe didn't quite make the downloads list, but you just really loved? Maybe you loved something that we didn't even talk about, and I would love to hear that as well, and I know Joy would too. Yeah. But send us a message and let us know what you liked and maybe even what you didn't. We want to be helpful. We don't want to be harmful. And so all of the good, loving criticism is welcome for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And over the next week, we will be reevaluating every aspect of birdie writing life. And that's what we do between each season and often mid-year as well. So this is something that happens a lot. And we just want to hear from you and take your preferences into consideration. After all, you guys are the reason why we make these episodes at all. So we want you to get the most out of them. Yes, definitely. So we hope that you guys have just an absolutely amazing week. And go make something. <laughs> Bye. I miss saying that. Oh. Thanks for listening until the end. Seriously, you're a trooper. Do you think pretty writing life is the bomb? May, you just said the bomb. Don't you censor me. If you think Cordy Writing Life rocks ice for real, oh my word. please rate, review, and share us with others. If you have questions about this week's episode or want to start a conversation, you can reach us by visiting cordywritinglife.podbean.com. We'll be back next week with more candid chats for you.